everyone, it's Chris Clark with DiscGolf.Law back with you today to talk about tee pads. We've gotten a lot of questions from people about the standardization of tee pads. It's a topic that has been talked about lately partly because the courses in Emporia where the World Championships will be held this year are going to have standardized tee pads. And we also have recently had some complaints from players. For example, Paul Macbeth blamed the tee pad for his errant shot in the playoff hole at the Jonesboro Open against Calvin Heimberg. Course designers have also been struggling with the question of what's the best tee pad to use. And is the answer that we have a standard tee pad for every course, regardless of the terrain or the particular requirements of that hole? Or should each tee pad be able to be customized for a particular hole or a particular type of course? We also have the issue of how is this going to be enforced? Is this something where the PDGA gets involved or the Disc Golf Pro Tour gets involved for Pro Tour events? And if so, how often are these tee pads to be inspected for compliance? And what might the consequence be for a tee pad that isn't in compliance with the required standards? There is obviously a cost associated with installing tee pads on the course, particularly if you're gonna be using a concrete tee pad. That can be an expensive and labor intensive process to install. It's also very difficult if not impossible, to move a concrete tee pad. There are other costs potentially associated with tee pads as well. For example, let's assume that on Paul Macbeth's drive off the tee on the playoff hole at Jonesboro, that he had suffered a significant injury due to a defect in the tee pad. Now, Paul Macbeth is unable to play for perhaps the rest of this season and maybe even beyond. Maybe the rest of his career is affected by this injury that was caused by a defective tee pad. That could potentially be a very expensive problem for someone. What is the answer? Do we customize tee pads in accordance with each particular course or even each particular hole? Or is it better that we go with a standardized tee pad across the board so that we always know that when a player steps up to tee off, that they're going to be safe and that it's going to be a predictable surface from which they can throw their disc? We've heard differing opinions from course designers and various players, and we've got numerous examples of players who have had legitimate complaints about the condition of tee pads at Pro Tour events. For example, there was one hole where Missy Gannon teed off and slipped and injured herself on this tee pad when Sarah Hokum stepped up to that same tee pad in that same tournament. She determined that the tee pad wasn't safe and decided to tee off from behind the tee pad. In her view, this was in compliance with PDGA rules. However, she was assessed a two-stroke penalty. On the other hand, this is a challenge for course designers because they want to be able to comply with the PDGA rules, but they also have to stay within a particular budget and be free and have some flexibility to design an appropriate tee pad for a particular type of hole or terrain. What about alternate tee pad placements? Should we consider having a standardized tee pad that is able to be moved? from tournament to tournament, or perhaps even within different rounds of a multi-round tournament. So what's the answer? Should we move in the direction of standardized tee pads for all courses? Or should there be multiple different types of tee pads that are approved, even though there is a risk associated with different types of surfaces on tee pads from one course to the next? Let us know what you think in the comments.